Good night and welcome to Change Life Deaf Church Bible Study. We're so happy that you've joined with us tonight. We pray that your knowledge about God and His ways would increase every week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time together in your Word, the Bible. We pray that your Word would change us, help us to understand your ways, and understand yourself and your plan for salvation of people. Bless us in this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. We have finished the letter of Paul to the church at Philippi. Tonight, we want to summarize what we should remember from that letter. Because Paul wrote that for that church, but also he wrote it for us. God allowed us to save that letter over the generations up until today so that we can have the teachings about living for God. Now, each chapter we're going to look at to see what we should remember from it. First, let's remind ourselves of where is Philippi. It's a small town in the middle of Greece or Asia Minor, which today is Turkey. It's right there. It's a very interesting town, and that town had many different temples to different idols. So Paul, when he arrived there, began preaching about Jesus, helping them to understand that there's only one God. And Paul himself traveled to arrive there. So, in chapter 1, what should we remember? Number 1, it's a wonderful privilege to be a servant of Jesus Christ. We see other letters from Paul where he called himself a servant or even a slave of Jesus Christ. And a servant does what? Preaching the good news. And that, for Paul, was a pleasure. He was eager to preach about Jesus. And you and I, we should be pleased as well that God chose us to make His word, His message, spread around the world. So we share the good news with people That's a wonderful privilege. We should not want to become a boss. Paul himself and others called themselves servants of God, and we are the same, servants of Jesus Christ. Next, Paul reminded them that Together, we need to pray and encourage each other to know Jesus better. We are not competing with each other. I'm better than you. We are all together trying to reach the goal, the same goal, 
and that is becoming like Jesus Christ. That's why we get together on Sundays every week or even other days of the week. We pray together and encourage each other to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Also in chapter 1, we need to remember God changes us continually until Jesus Christ returns. No person, no Christian, can say, I'm arrived, I'm holy, I'm perfect. None of us. We always know that my own life, your own life, is not perfect. We are not finished changing. We all have sin, bad thoughts, bad attitudes. We need to remember Jesus is changing us through his word. He's giving us a new life. That old life we're putting away for the new life with God. And he is continuing that process. Sometimes that change hurts us. We feel bad. Oh, I shouldn't have. But remind ourselves, he's making us more and more holy and pure. Number four, live to honor Christ and speak boldly about Christ Jesus. We don't need to be ashamed about being a Christian. To believe in God, let's not be embarrassed. We have the truth, so we should tell everyone. Tell about the truth in Jesus Christ. And our lives should reflect that. Living right before God. Living right before people. When we speak, we need to say something like, I know that Jesus Christ is risen. Not, I think. Not sure. We are sure. Because God's Word, the Bible, tells us. Number five. This is all about chapter one now. The church is one together to give strength to each other. On Sunday morning is for what? To help each other become more and more holy, encourage each other to live right. We are one family. Paul uses the words brother and sister with that church over and over. In this letter and other letters, Paul thought the church was not different individuals, different groups. We are all one family together, looking to Jesus, our hope for eternal life. And we together on Sunday or Tuesday or any other day, anytime we meet together as Christians, our focus is on God, encouraging each other and helping each other always. Chapter 2, Paul begins another topic, something from chapter 2 that really will encourage us as Christians. The first thing is, Jesus is both man, God, and man at the same time. That's hard for us to understand. How can a person be God and man at the same time? 
but it's true. Paul uses that a lot in this chapter about this topic. Let's look at John chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, The Word, and who was the Word? Jesus, became man and lived among us. We saw His divine greatness, the greatness that belongs to the only Son of the Father. Jesus had all of God in Him at the same time. He wasn't divided half and half. No. Completely God, completely man. Able to understand God, able to understand us, people. He is our example. He lived perfect for God. I can too. How? By following Him by being with Him. And He promises, Jesus promised to help us, how? By sending the Holy Spirit to live in us. When we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes inside to help us to live right. We need to agree with Jesus. that He was not only a man, but a man plus God. That's why He was able to save us by His death and resurrection. Proof that He was truly God and truly man, because He died just like us, and He's going to resurrect the same as us. Number two, it says, Everyone will bow down to Jesus as Lord. This idea is extremely important for us to understand. Now it looks like God is not winning. It looks like more and more evil. But one day, Jesus himself will return, and every eye is going to see him. Every knee will bow down. Romans chapter 14, verse 11. Paul is writing to another church and he says, Yes, the scriptures say, As surely as I live, says the Lord, everyone will bow before me. Everyone will say that I am God. Many people think, no, I'm not going to bow down to anyone. But you will. When Jesus comes, every knee will bow. You either bow now or you will bow down later. You will. The third thing, God gives us Comfort through Jesus Christ. When we have trouble or problems, sadness, where is our comfort? It's from God, through Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 says, He comforts us every time we have trouble so that when others have trouble, we can comfort them with the same comfort God gives us. God gives us comfort. My trouble in my trouble, in my problem, my sadness or disappointment, I can comfort other in their sadness and trouble. God gives things that we can share with others. That's what it means to become a family, helping each other, comforting each other. When we hear a brother or sister in the church has disappointment, maybe a death in the family, it touches us. 
so we can comfort them because we know God has comforted me. Number three says, don't complain or argue. Everyone has good days and bad days in life. Paul is telling the church there, many people, and in other letters, we all have problems, arguments. Paul is always telling them, calm down, don't worry, don't argue, don't complain about each other. Remember, we're all the same. We're on the same journey towards God. And we need to encourage each other. Sometimes we're all happy. We're having a great day. Next day, it's a terrible day. Everything going wrong. We need to be patient with each other, helping each other being nice to each other. Not angry, not arguing, but peaceful and nice. Number four, teaching of God brings life. We receive life in our body, true. But we have another part of ourselves, our spirit. Now our spiritual life is related to our body. So we need to have a good spiritual life here on earth as well. And that's what God is giving us through His Word, the Bible. We learn what is right living here on earth. as we live in front of other people, live righteously. They'll become curious, maybe. And then we can explain about God. And then God promises us a future life in heaven. We have the hope that in the future I will be with God in heaven. I will. I'm not wondering what's happening after I die. No, I know it's true. My body is going to die, but my spirit will be in heaven. Why? Because I'm connected with Jesus Christ. That's why. Not because I'm a good person. Not because I go to church. I preach. No. Only because of my relationship, I believe in Jesus Christ And he has forgiven all of my sins, just like you, every one of us. Chapter 3. Remember, from chapter 3, first, Paul contrasts between the old way of circumcision, the Jewish law, and a new way, which is faith, believing in Jesus Christ. The old way was not perfect. It only showed the way to the new way. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4 it says, Because it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. What is that? Why? Because the old way They had to sacrifice over and over and over, every year. The sin was not removed. They had new sacrifices every year. Those sacrifices were for what? To delay the punishment, the final punishment for sin. The new way In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 says, I mean that you have been saved by grace because you believe you did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God, 
not a sacrifice, something that you and I do to become right. No. We become right is a gift from Jesus Christ. His perfect life is gifted to us when we believe. We don't need this sacrifice to re as a remembrance every year, every year. Sin has been removed now through Jesus Christ. And the old way still reminds of sin every year. Now our sin is forgiven and forgotten. We receive a new life that is right with God through Jesus Christ. Number two, our relation with Christ is the most important thing. It's not some action that we do every Sunday on, in church. It's a relationship like brothers and sisters, a family. John chapter 1, verse 12. But some people did accept him. They believed in him, and he gave them the right to become children of God. You see? It's a relationship. It's not some ritual that I do to become right with God. No. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I believe in Him, and He gifts me to become a child of God. 3 says, We must continue to allow God to change us. Now remember, God wants us to become better more holy, pure. We need to allow God to touch our hearts and tell us that's wrong. Help me not to do that. Let us change us. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Paul writes, Don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world. But let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to Him and what is perfect. Allow your thinking to be changed. How? His Word, the Bible. Remember, Read it every day. I encourage you, over and over, read it every day. His Word will give you how to live right, and the Spirit inside you will help you to be strong to do right. Don't be like the world. The world is leading to destruction. The world is opposite to God. Follow God. He will make us ready for heaven, to live with Him forever. Number four of chapter three. Look for Christ's return. Jesus Christ is coming back. He will. Our hope is not here. Our hope is in heaven. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5 says, I say this because our hope of being right with God comes through faith and the Spirit helps us feel sure as we wait for that hope. A Holy Spirit in us allows us to trust, to hold on to the promise that Jesus will return. We don't give up it's too long. No. We continue to believe no matter what people tells me. No, I don't care. I believe the Bible. It says that Jesus will return to earth, and he will. 
and we eagerly wait for that hope. Eagerly waiting for Jesus to return. Because we know He's going to set up His kingdom and rule. And when He comes, our bodies will be changed. The old body will put on a new body, just like Jesus' body. Now, chapter 4. The person who tells the good news, their name is written in the book of life. The letter Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3 says, They worked hard with me in telling the good news, together with Clement and others who worked with me. Their names are written in the book of life in heaven. God has a book. And in there is a list of names, page after page of names. And whose names? Any person who believes in Jesus Christ. If your name is in there, you're welcomed into heaven. Your name is not there in that book, you're rejected. That's what's going to happen. Jesus has promised at the end of time, every person will stand before God. And their names that are found in the book of life will be welcomed into heaven. The names that are not in the book of life will be sent away to hell. Make sure your name is in that book of life. Be sure. Trust in Jesus. Believe in His work on the cross, His death, His resurrection, His return. You must believe because then your name will be written in the book of life. Number two says, Pray and thanks for all things. Chapter 4 and verse 6 says, Don't worry about anything but pray and ask God for everything that you need, always giving thanks for what you have. God gives us a lot of things, food, clothing, housing, health, everything. We need to thank God for it, for all that He's given to us. Let us not forget so that we become upset that person has more than me. No, thank God for what we have. He's given us so much already. Thank Him a lot. Number three, God gives us all that we need. Chapter 4 and verse 19, My God, will use His glorious riches to give you everything you need. He will do this through Jesus Christ. All these things that we need, God gives us. Plus, God gives us spiritual needs, spiritual strength, spiritual holiness, purity, eternal life, in heaven, that is God's gifts as well, through Jesus Christ. How wonderful that we have all of these things from Him. The last thing says, praise God always. Verse 20 says, glory to God our Father forever and ever. Amen. Praise God always. We have so much to thank God for. For what He's done already. And we need to praise Him more and more. Not give up praising God. Thanking Him for everything. I hope you remember some of these things from the letter of Philippians.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We pray that you would bless us as we study your word continually. Help us to become one family in Jesus Christ. Get along with each other and love each other. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you so much for watching. See you again next week. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. We hope that your heart was touched by God's Word, and we hope that you learned something about the Word tonight. Please give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, press the thumbs up, and also the red subscribe button. It will help us to get the video out to all over the world so that many deaf will see the videos. Okay? God bless you and good night. And we'll see you again next week. Same time, 7.30. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.